Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thank you so much for tuning into this video today. Today is part two of the political guides answer your questions. Uh, the political spirit guides, I should say, answer your questions. Uh, part one was a rousing affair <laughs> in which I learned that Representative Clyburn uh, could have sold us out to um, the highest bidder or the devil or whatever you want to call Republicans these days. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes, but I do think that he's going to pay a high price for working with the other side against his own constituents. Of course, I think that's going to be gathering steam rather slowly. This may be slow to gain steam, but it will, it will eventually, I believe, cause him to step down. So let me go to part two now, where we're going to start off with question by Dusty Rose. Uh, hi, Dusty. And Dusty's just going to bring it right out of the gate like we like to do over here on my channel. We like to just get down to business. And Dusty says, please ask about Betsy DeVos. Is she involved in the false adoption? And not only adoption, but Dusty's bringing it with abuse. Is she involved? in the false adoption and potential alleged abuse of kids? Well, Dusty, the short answer is yes. Um, this is for entertainment purposes only. And I would also say, allegedly, we don't know. We don't have any proof. We don't have a court of law. We don't have charges, indictments. We don't have all the things we need to be able to say this with, with an unequivocal yes, right? Because supposedly in this land, you're innocent until proven guilty. So, but I will say that if I was reading the energy and I was guessing around, because you have to be careful with people like this type of person, that yes, um, I'm also seeing international involvement. International involvement. I'm seeing um, mostly they're, they're, it's ugly, Dusty. What I'm seeing is ugly. I'm seeing some, I'm going to say potential or alleged trafficking of minors, not just kids, but minors. And I'm seeing this in the sense of, um, I'm trying to be very, very careful here of when you live in a tourist town, you will know this, but if you live in a tourist town, a lot of businesses get these special visas for these foreigners to come in and work for the busy season, whether that's winter or summer, or whatever it is for you. Um, you will have many, sometimes hundreds of these young adults. The They're typically over 18 and they come and they work for that season and then they theoretically go back to their country. I've known people that have done this. I've come across people that have done this. I, I have firsthand experience and knowledge of this. That is lawful. That is doing it in the lawful way. Now, what the guides are telling me is, is that she does this kind of work, but it's, and again, allegedly, but it's it's not lawful, allegedly. It it it, it brings in people, I'm seeing People from Latin America uh, come in to do certain jobs and 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 they are the, allegedly trafficked, meaning that there could be sometimes some legal paperwork or documents, whether they're real or not, I don't know. But in other times, there's also, um, they, they want to talk about this a lot lately, as above, so below, right? So um, above the line, there's legal documents, but then there's a whole nother ecosystem below the legal line. And those people that are being provided, uh, they're trafficked. And, and it's not necessarily for sex. It's, it's for being a maid or whatever it is, a job, trafficked for a job. Um, and, and that is in the guides are kind of calling it, it it's enslavement, but it's a it's a different word. I can't think I can't understand the words they're using, but um, maybe it'll come to me. But yes, it appears allegedly that she would be involved in a lot of these things. And then the next question, if you're a kind of person like me and you you always ask questions, you might ask, will this become known? And then the next question one might wonder is, would this person 
face any consequences? And I'm going to say yes to both of those questions. That yes, this is going to be known. And, and I want to tell you that it is known in certain circles. Oh, I don't even know if I want to go there. Um, I I was just seeing Jack Smith, and I was like asking them while I was talking to you, why am I seeing Jack Smith? And then I saw The Hague. So there was no denying that it was Jack Smith. I mean, it was like, okay. And then and then I saw sort of, okay, so right. So when, when they first started talking, they gave me a whole bunch of information at once. I saw this Latin America thing, right? Okay, so these people that are sort of brown skin, if you will. And then I saw this other um, entity or group of people that were very pale skinned. Uh, and, and they looked like kind of Ukrainian, Russian um and then also that kind of area. So uh, now why is Jack Smith and the Hague involved in this? Oh, because of the Ukraine, uh, because of uh, the, the people that the kids and the young adults that got, I want to use the word kidnapped, but I don't know if I can use that, that got removed from a uh, Ukraine uh, annexed areas of Ukraine. So they were contentious. These, these areas were used to be Ukrainian and then Russia annexed them, you know, say whatever, a decade ago or whatever it was, Crimea, some parts of the Donbass. Um, her group or someone that could be affiliated with her group could be involved in that. And I and I'm and I'm thinking also that there could be groups that portray themselves as aid groups, but they're not aid groups, the traffickers. And and I feel like this is known, not I mean known in The Hague, obviously, but I'm seeing people like in Denmark, in Sweden, in um Switzerland, in those kind of countries the Netherlands, they know this. There's an awareness from that part of the country about what's going on. And yet other parts of the world are turning a blind eye to it. So that was a very simple question that you asked that ended up in The Hague. Uh, I don't know how. So will she be before The Hague? I, I can't guarantee she won't. I, I, can't, I can't guarantee she won't. Um, I, has an American ever been in front of the Hague? Probably. I, I don't know. Um, international court of law. They're, they're, they're going to, um, give me more information and that is international court of law. So you might see her or her minions or her group subsidiary be investigated in an international court of law. And it, and it feels like this could happen as soon as this year in 23. It seems like you may hear about this by August of 2023. Thank you for that very simple uh, question, Dusty, that ended up being all taken us all the way around the world twice. Um, very interesting, right? You never know what you're going to get when you ask the spirit guides. Okay, Pat Lee says, in her humble opinion, Sheldon Whitehouse is a genuine hero. He's been shining a light on the Supreme Court dark money for a long time. What do the guides see for his future? And I think there were some comments under Pat Lee's comment about people hoping that he could maybe run for president. Um, right now, when I go into his energy, he is feeling that he is in the good fight, right? That he's in the place where he's supposed to be at this time in his life. He really feels like he has more, he has the potential to do more good from, from where he's at than he would if he were even in the Biden administration or if he were a VP or a president. I don't know how old he is, uh, but I, I think that I wouldn't count this guy out. I, I do think he's an angel. I do think that he's one of the good ones. And if you watched the last video, then you know that some of these Democrats are going to potentially be called out for wrongdoings. And um, and I obviously he's not one of them. There are many amazing Democrats that are really doing the work and are really ethical. And I would say that the majority of them are. 
but there will be a few that will get called out. It's always the fly and the ointment, right? Um, but I he, right now, Sheldon is feeling quite good about where he is. I, I feel like um, they're telling me that he's going to be the architect. I mean, that's what they said, and they keep giving me chills. Um, he, If you watched the last video, the guides talked a lot about how we're going to turn to the Constitution and our amendments, and we're going to tune it up. We're going to make it viable or more viable and more representative of our population here in 23, 24, 25, 26. This is where we're going. We are literally going to dissolve some institutions and rebuild them. The Supreme Court, I really think, could get down to maybe two Supreme Court justices. Of all the ones we have now, I think in three years, you may only see two on the Supreme Court three or four years from now that that are in right now. So there is this sense of dissolving and rebuilding. And I think that um, we're lucky to have somebody like Sheldon Whitehouse that can be the architect, that can help us understand, not only from a very intellectual standpoint and knowledgeable standpoint, but also someone who has a real heart and soul, who really gets it as a human, as a United States citizen, and then also, you know, in this place of power. Uh, so he really gets it from all angles. And I think we're lucky to have him where he's at. And I think that there's a reason that he's where he's at. I think he's going to be one of the bright lights that's going to shepherd us through this long night, this dark night of the soul the United States is going through and into the sunlight. So I'm glad you asked that question. I, I always really admired and respected him, but I didn't know that about him. I didn't see that he was going to be so important in the remaking, so to speak, of various parts of our constitution. So that's that's fantastic. And the amendments. Okay. Uh, Jennifer Eileen Perry says, Brian Kemp in Georgia signed the law that allows the GOP to remove a prosecutor in the middle of a case, whatever reasons, for whatever reasons they find, ask the guys about what will happen if they try to take Fifani Willis off the case. So um, this law has been going through the Georgia State House for months, and now I guess it's become law. The governor has signed it into law. And it it, it does give the State House a lot of room to remove prosecutors. Um, but I don't see them removing Fonnie Willis. And I'll tell you why, because I don't see them removing her before she can strike the mortal blow anyway. she They may remove her after she strikes the mortal blow is what they're calling it, the final blow, but they're not going to remove her before. And here's why, Jack Smith. Um, all these people in the state house are being are under a microscope right now. And it's just not Fonnie Willis, right? It's it's Jack Smith is looking at the same things that Fonnie Willis is looking at. And for you long-term viewers, God bless you. Um, do you remember when the guides would always say, here's Donald Trump facing us, okay? And we are looking at this scene. And the scene is, is that you have Fonnie Willis, Tish James, Alvin Bragg, and Jack Smith standing in a row. And, you know, these prosecutors, the Fonnie Willis, the Alvin Bragg, the Tish James, you know, they're all getting ready to grab Trump. And remember, Jack Smith, the DOJ, they said, this is before Jack Smith. <laughs> They said the DOJ reaches over them, grabs Trump and says, he's mine. Federal charges, Trump, haha, your charges. I'll be taking care of this first and you can have whatever's left over. So this is why I'm not worried about Fonnie Willis. I do think that she's going to, to strike the mortal blow because they're calling it the mortal blow. They've often said that Atlanta was ground zero. Um, this all indicates to me 
that I think Fonnie Willis is going to really deal a blow not only to 45, but also to Lindsey Graham. And just they're reminding me, uh, it started out with one fake elector coming over to Fonnie Willis's side, turn state witness. And then Fonnie Willis was able to understand that the other fake electors weren't given the information that she was offering them a plea deal. So then Fonnie Willis went after the attorney employed by those fake electors and said, you're not representing your clients because I offered them a plea deal and they don't know about it. Therefore, you're, you know, you're in trouble. And so Fonnie Willis said, I want to move to remove this attorney from these people because she's not representing them. Now, this attorney wasn't some flyby Trump attorney. This attorney was a professor, a law professor. And so Fonnie Willis just smacked her down. And guess what? Now Fonnie Willis has eight fake electors, state's witness. Eight of those people are on her side. Now, who's not on her side? All of those states legislators who are trying to remove her. It's too late. Folks, it's too late. She's already got you. And you better believe that whatever she's got, she's handing it back to Mr. Smith. So I do think that they may remove her, but I do not think that they're going to remove her before she strikes the mortal blow. And even if that is, okay, here's all my paperwork, Mr. Smith, right? So what? They don't get charged with RICO charges. They get charged with federal charges. I mean, these people are, are toast. As a matter of fact, the toaster is on fire. Their toast is burned. So I'm not worried. I'm just not worried about it. Um, I'm not worried about that woman. She's going places. She, she is, uh, she will, she's going places. I think she's going to be employed at the federal level before long. So I don't, um, so, you know, it's just like they could have appointed Garland as a Supreme Court judge, but instead they didn't. And now he's coming around to bite y'all in your butts. It's just like this. You could have left Fonnie to do her work, but no, you're going to get crazy and get in her way. And now she's going to be a federal judge or a federal prosecutor. And she's going to come back and get you in a whole different way. <laughs> so I'm telling you, these people can't win right now because the light is shining on them. Number one. And number two, we finally have the activation energy. To, to hold them accountable. It's as if the judges have said, and this is so true, the guides tell me this all the time. It's as if the business community and the judges all kind of waited to see how, what was going to go down. You know, like if fascism is going to win, we want to be on the fascist side, right? We, we want to see who's going to win here before we, you know, really pick a side. That's really what happened. That's why during... 45's reign, all these judges were rubber stamping all this fascist BS because they really thought fascism was going to win. I personally thought that the business, the, the business environment, the business, the corporations would say, this is bad for business. We don't want fascism. They didn't. They signed up for that stuff. They were like, yeah. So that was a rude awakening for me during 45's reign because I thought, Business is never going to let this happen because I always thought business would keep the Republicans within some kind of guardrail. Well, I learned my lesson. And I and I had I been reading history, I would have already learned the businesses signed in behind Hitler. I mean, they, they're going to go where the money is, right? So what you have now is they're realizing the business sector and the judges are realizing, oh, snap. We've put, we bet on the wrong horse. We thought this was going to win. It's losing. Let us back up. Let us erase and whitewash 
all of our history and come out looking like the good stewards of citizenship that we really want to be right now. So this is why you see now judges all of a sudden upholding, you know, rulings that were settled law, whereas during 45's reign of terror, they were not upholding settled law. That's how we got to the whole problem with Roe v. Wade, right? And now everybody's literally switching, switching all of their opinions and switching their allegiances because they they get it. Game over. I'm not going to get arrested, but like that dummy, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to clean up everything, all my social media. I'm going to reinvent myself overnight, right? So that's what we're seeing. That's why I have hope. I mean, that's a crazy reason to have hope, but that's why I have hope. I mean, they're betting on the side of democracy now. That means democracy won. Now it's just a matter of acting out the actual give and take and the indictments and the charges, but it's over other than that. Okay. I have no idea how I got there, but that's where I got. Okay. Thank you for your question, Jennifer. D.D. Abel says, what does SCOTUS KJB, so Katanji, Katanji uh, Brown, I think, um, when I'm connected to guides, I don't have access to my own uh, filing cabinets. Um, what, what does she think about being on SCOTUS with all this unethical behavior? Well, The guides want to say that she So first of all, she's she's saying her hands are tied. She can't do much, right? They're they're in the minority. Her hands are tied. She's really working right now on writing really good briefs. You know what I mean? Like she understands that whatever she's writing is going to go into history. It's going to be a part of her legacy. So she's really working on kind of like being very focused on just her job. Um, and, and that's all she can do because it's in a way she's kind of got some fear about how much power they have, not they, not her, but they, those rogue justices, and how scoff laws, what's a scoff, scoff law? Isn't that somebody that scoffs at the law, right? She said she's calling them scoff laws. I think it's S C O F F L A W S. Um, she's worried. Uh, she's got fear around what's going to happen, like to the institution of the Supreme Court. Now, she was she was warned, she, you know, the, people know this is going on. This isn't really happening in the deep, dark shadows that we think it is. Um, it's just the level of it was more than she ever expected. So she knew that there was a little bit of you know, hanky panky things going on with various justices being paid. And she knew that. Um, but she didn't know that it would go to the depths of the court that it has. And I don't think I'm going to do this right now, but I just want to say 10 minutes before I started this video, Sandra Day O'Connor came into my consciousness. I'm pretty sure she was a Supreme Court justice. I don't know anything about her. I don't know if she's R, D, don't know. I don't know why she's in my consciousness, but she's here. I, I can see her face. I mean, she has a thin lip smile, doesn't she? White lady. Um, then why are you here? Who are you? Anyway, I don't have time. I got things to do. I got a whole list of questions. And then these people like Sandra Day O'Connor, if you're going to come up in here, you need to be ready. You need to be ready with a message because I'm busy. Okay, come back later. I have office hours. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so she's she she she's going to be fine, but I would tell you that it's stressing her out. And I would, I would, I'm a little worried about her, her heart. 
I, I don't think she's going to have a MI or something, but, but she has a lot of pressure right here. There's a lot of pressure being a, an African-American woman on the Supreme Court. Like she feels the weight of that, of, of that more than, you know, it's, it's a lot of pressure to represent. It's a lot of pressure. She feels like she's under a microscope. And, and I think part of her ruse the day, like, why do I get my dream or this amazing opportunity when it's a three ring circus? You know what I mean? Why couldn't I be on a more balanced court? She really doesn't want an imbalanced court. She doesn't particularly want it to be a liberal court. I don't think she's particularly liberal. I think she's a centrist, to be honest with you. I think she's a very thoughtful, studied person who can see a lot of different angles. Um, I don't I don't find her to be a, a knee jerk liberal. So I think that she would like a balanced court because I think she feels that's America, right? Is to have a balance and and get together with the other justices and, and give your opinions and hear the argument. You know what I mean? So I think she's a little sad that that she's that that this is her time and it's not the best time it's a it's a sad time at on the court and i don't know if her mom is is here or in spirit but i feel like she has a very close relationship with her mom i feel like her mom is in spirit i don't know but she has a close relationship with her mom She she's she's a religious person without being, you know, super religious. She she has a deep faith, I would say, a deep and abiding faith. Her and Biden are quite her and Biden quite like each other. They they quite respect each other, I would say. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Uh thank you for your question, Dee Dee Abel. And Sandra Ms. Justice O'Connor. I don't know what you're doing. Okay. NH Mount New Hampshire Mountain Dancer says, um, hello, hello. With the fake electors, with the eight fake electors that's in Georgia taking the immunity deal, affect the other electors in the other states. Will, I think you meant to say, will the fake electors taking the immunity deal affect affect the other electors in the other states? Well, yes and no. So, um, God, what are they saying? So I got to get all this straight. And plus I have Sandra Day O'Connor. I don't know what the hell she wants. Connie Willis, Georgia. They have, the state of Georgia has just its own very robust RICO law. The state of Georgia has a very strong RICO law. So those Georgians, that, you know, knew something and then told somebody else something. And then that person knew something and told somebody else something. And all the way down the line, it ended up in a crime. They're all in a nice little um, conga line together, a conga line of crimes. But in other states, they don't have that kind of strong RICO law. So what I feel like would happen is then that's when Fonnie Willis hands it over to Jack Smith, who's behind her, and, and he takes it and adds it to his nice pile, which is getting quite high, of people to investigate and to flip to get those people that he wants. So I do think it will affect the other states' fake electors, but not in a way that's directly related to Fonnie Willis. Okay, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, cause when I'm channeling, I don't really know what I just said. So, um, that's why I often say, I don't know what I just said, or if that makes any sense, that's why I'm saying that. Um, okay. Fed girl says, will the Pentagon remove Fox news from its military stations? I've often wondered is if this is what, if this may have contributed to some military people being involved in Jan six, I think so. Uh, the Fox 
Come on, y'all. That's a pun and a half. The fox is in the hen house is what they just said. And I caught it at the last minute. I have a punster, apparently. Um, so yes, it, it undermined. The guides are saying it undermined the readiness. They're using the word readiness of our troops to serve the United States. That is a key thing. If you're from the military or you're in defense or readiness is a is like a hot button term it's a very important term readiness is everything because it means hey if we need to call up our troops and get them into active situation they have to be ready so readiness is is incredibly important and what the guides are saying is having fox news playing on and bases directly impacted the readiness of them to support the United States of America and our constitution and our laws. So absolutely it did impact um it did impact everything. Uh what we have what um a lot of the things you guys are asking we're going to get there but we're not going to get there the way you might think. So and and that is infuriating to me because what what you think would happen is that Biden would get with his Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Joint Chiefs of Staff would call up whomever they need to call up, a one-star general, a two-star general, I don't care. You can call up Barney Fife. I don't care who you need to call and have them switch the station, right? Uh, maybe they should just play House Hunters International or something. You know, they should <laughs> they should play HGTV or I don't know what. Um, but that's not going to happen. And And this is where I think citizens really get upset because to us, it seems so simple, but to Biden, there's a chain of command and then there's a way of doing things. And then the Joint Chiefs of Staff need to make a suggestion, perhaps, that that commanding officer not play Fox News. And it's not really up to anybody but that commanding officer, right? There's there's a chain of command for a reason. And something as simple as playing a TV show has not been seemed or deemed to be worth rattling the chain of command. So you would have to have research. You would have to have an edict. You know, you would have to have a statement from on high. Uh, perhaps it would have to be Biden that says, I'm banning Fox News from being on these bases. And for whatever reason, nobody wants to rattle the chains. It's like everybody's afraid of these bullies. Um, I don't get it. I, I think Biden is finally taking the gloves off. He certainly has taken some swings at MTG. And I think that you're going to see more and more of that. But in this case, I see it fixed in a different way. Like we're going to see this in many different ways, in many different things that we really care about. It might come from a different direction. And in this case, I see Fox News, we've talked about this a lot, imploding. I see it being broken up into multiple little subsidiaries. I don't see Fox News being Fox News. I think Tucker Carlson was the first one to go. I think some other uh, others of their anchors are going next. Um, I think Fox, and this is the energy all the way around, is it's the same thing. Like people are asking, where's Meadows? You know, these people disappear. Where's Roger Stone? They disappear, hoping that if they just lay low, Justice will go right over them, you know. <laughs> Lady Justice will run right past them if they're hiding over here. That ain't gonna happen, y'all. What are y'all crazy? Y'all can hide all you want. It, it, hiding isn't gonna do anything. So I feel like with Fox, they did the big deal. They said, We'll give you Tucker Carlson in return. You're gonna turn a blind eye to us. And you're just gonna let us do our thing. No, that's not how it works, people. That, that that might be how it works in Crooked Town over there with the Republicans. That's not how it works in the rest of the world. Uh, light Lady Justice is 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 in town now, and there's a new sheriff in town. She don't do it like that. So what I see is that it's like it's like Fox took Tucker Carlson and put him in the volcano to to appease the the volcano gods. And every time I say that, my Hawaii viewers get upset with me because the last time I did it, I said we were going to put Trump in the volcano. And I can't tell you how many Hawaiians said prayers for me. 
<laughs> for doing that. So I'm sorry if I've upset you, my Hawaiian aloha, beautiful people. I don't mean to, but it's as if um, we sacrificing, maybe let's just switch it to Mayan, uh, you know, to the Mayan gods. We're going to sacrifice Tucker, Tucker Carlson. That So Fox is waiting, basically, to see if that's going to appease the gods, you know, and, it, and if somebody's still coming after them, then they're going to throw another one in the pit. You know, they'll throw another anchor overboard and they're going to find out that they're going to have to throw two more anchors overboard, two more of their whatever they are. I don't know what they what, what you call them besides liars over uh, into the um, abyss, the sacrificial abyss. And then they're going to find out, OK, this is it. End of game. Lights out. You guys, the guides have been telling you this for over a year. Lights out for Fox News. Lights out, done, over. We've been saying this nonstop. And now it's finally starting to happen, thank God. But once they realize that no amount of, you know, liars that they throw into the sacrificial abyss will give them some sort of cover from the feds, then their best bet is for the SEC to break them up, is, is for them to say, uncle, we give up, we're wa waving the flag, we're going to break Fox into multiple subsidiaries, um, maybe none of which will be political, and uh, we'll be nice kids. We'll just have sports and, and home decoration and gardening. You know what I mean? We're not going to, we're not going to get so that's what I see happening. That's how it gets off the base. The basis is because it disappears. It, it's no longer alive. Now, the guides are telling me that, you know, we've got General Flynn's brother, who's the commander in chief over the Pacific, which makes me so upset that it's liable to throw me out of my connection to my spirit guides. But you can have. If, if we don't have some kind of shakedown and some, some kind of um, new structure in our military, then theoretically they could tune it in to own or, or, you know, one of those crazy, even crazier than Fox News uh, stations, right? Um, and, and the guides are telling me, you guys remember, I don't know if you remember this, when Biden was first president, they had one day where the entire military had to stand down. The entire military had to stand down because they need, needed to have an accounting, an inventory, a check-in, because they knew that they had so many bad apples in there that weren't supporting the United States. So this is gonna continue. You're gonna see a reduction of our forces and you're gonna see a real I mean, unfortunately, the spirit guides just use the word witch hunt, but I mean, I'm, I'm, it is what it is. I don't know. Maybe that's because that's my lexicon, right? They, they don't, they couldn't come up with another word, but let's say investigation, a real shakedown of our military, uh, of their social media. I mean, we just had that guy that was in, in the national guard and now who was sharing top secret information with other countries. And that has grown. I don't know if you guys have heard the news, but now other, his superiors are now investigated. So I, I find that, I feel that this is going to bloom across the entire military. It's, it's been infiltrated. And when we have to get a, we have to really have a very clear eyed look at our troops and the readiness of them. And that, that's what you're going to start seeing. So as far as Fox News, that's the beginning of all of that. I hope that helps, Fed Girl. Um, Linda J says, are they going to investigate SCOTUS members for tax evasion? Now, when you say they, I think you would be talking about the IRS. Um, or maybe, maybe you're talking about the state. Maybe you're talking about they're, they're showing me um, the Tish James equivalent. Hmm. Tax evasion, tax evasion, tax evasion. 
Um, when you guys ask questions like SCOTUS, and so that's, you know, like a bunch of people, and then tax of it, it's hard for me to answer that because I have to go through each SCOTUS member. member. Um, it, it, will any SCOTUS uh, member be investigated for tax? Yes. Okay. Yes. The answer is yes. And I feel like that might be two or three. And they might throw a Democrat in there for good measure, which is fine. You know, again, it's just like when they found the secret documents in 45 and then they found them in, you know, Biden's garage and then they found them in Pence's. So, you know, yeah, I mean, let's do a thorough investigation. Let's let's create a. You know, a, a line that everybody has to pass, regardless of whether you're an R and a D. And and then we'll see who passes. I think the Democrat that they investigate will pass. I don't think the Republicans will. So, yes, I think that answers your question. I'm I'm seeing I'm I'm seeing Kavanaugh. And um I think I'm seeing Alito. Oh God, I'm seeing all of them. I'm seeing Gorsuch. I'm seeing Kavanaugh. I'm seeing uh, Coney Barrett. Um, and I'm seeing, um, I mean, Thomas gets investigated for a lot of things. I don't know if evasion is it exactly or if it's, I'm not sure, but they, they, let's just say that all of those people are going to have their taxes um, investigated or scrutinized. Scrutinized is the word. And then from that scrutinizing of the tax documents, there's spinoffs of investigations. So you know, you see this and then it's, and then it, 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 it's just like what ProPublica did, right? That not-for-profit journalism uh, group that has been doing such a good job with Thomas, you know, you just follow, you follow the crumbs wherever they lead you. And that's what a good investigator will do as well. So I think that's, um, the guides just said, it's the tip of the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg. And we all know there's a lot more under the water when you have an iceberg. So that's a great question. Thank you so much. Ellen Bukima says, oh, another question regarding taxes. Oh, each state does its own thing. Regarding taxes, each state does its own thing. Some states seem to take better care of their people than others. Will a time come when all states follow a similar taxing structure? It would be nice to retire anywhere. Right now, some states are more tax friendly to seniors than others. Well, that's a really good question. If you watched the last video, the guides talked a lot about the dissolution, uh, the dissolving of our structure and, and, that, and that all the structures, right? The Senate, the House, the SCOTUS, the amendments to the Constitution. We're going to be looking at all of these things, which in the past we thought were written in stone, so to speak. Now we realize that that stone is crumbling, it's falling apart, it's got real structural problems, and it needs to either be A, replaced, or B, shored up with more structure. So the reason that's important to your question is because, um, is because states' rights. So the way our system is set up, the states have their rights and the federal government has its duties and it's meant to create a lot of separation of power. And that that's worked well for us. If we didn't have such a big separation of powers, um, Jan 6 might've gone a little differently, but I do see much more federal control of a lot of things like federal federal laws coming down to even out the playing field of, let's say, choice, uh, you know, abort cho choice, choice of having an abortion. Also, 
gun laws, also voting. Right now, the states are making a mockery of all of these laws. They're just making an absolute mockery. Uh, right now, DeSantis wants to take radioactive ingredients and mix it into asphalt and use it on roads, Radi radioactive roads. That's what DeSantis wants to do. So in this way, the states have proven that they cannot govern, that they, they are not governing their own citizens to the best benefit of those citizens. So I do see the states losing power. And that, that goes to your question about taxes. I do see these more and more umbrella laws that's going to curtail what the states can do. And I don't know that, I, I do see the tax code, whatever you want to call it, being rewritten and being much simpler. It's, it's, it's way too complicated. It's honestly a, it's actually a, um, it's a detriment to the average citizen to have to navigate and file taxes. It, it's too complicated. And that's because they're every time the IRS tries to cover up a loophole, you know, these brilliant people figure out another loophole, right? So I do see the taxes, the tax law being rewritten. Um, I don't know if I see your question going through, though. I don't know that I see the taxing structure as far as retirement goes being the same in all states. I can't tell you 100% that that's going to happen. I, I can say that with all the changes being made and with all of the complete and total craziness, and I want to say that they used another word that starts with dumb and ends with a uri, <laughs> um, that State red states are losing money. They're losing citizens. They're going to be they're going to be losing businesses because businesses are not going to want to be operating where there's all these mass shootings. Um, so, and and uh, Americans are going to be remote workers. This is going to continue. So even if my my company is headquartered in a red state, I don't have to work. I don't have to live there. So when you see these people leaving these states for the blue states that, that may have higher taxes in some ways, but have so much better care. And one of the main things the guides are saying is the longevity. You live 10 years, eight to 10 years longer in a blue state than you do a red state. Anybody that can afford to move is going to move. So in that way, I can see red states saying, okay, we're going to sweeten the pot. We're going to make retiree, you know, they're going to change the tax code to try to bring those citizens back. So I can see it being solved possibly in that way, but not in the way that the government gets involved. And I could be wrong, completely wrong between now and when this happens, a lot of things are going to change. Hopefully we'll have new Congress people that are more imaginative and care more about their people, their constituents, and, and, we, and that these states might really start making some big strides. We are in the dark night of the soul right now. So trying to predict what these people are going to do when half of them in, are in jail and the other half of them have the spotlight shined on them is kind of hard, but you know we're doing the best we can. So Kathy Kenobi says, Ron DeSantis is in his last term as Florida governor. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Sadly, he will remain Florida's governor until 2026. Do the guides see a Democrat taking the governorship in 26, in November 26? Great question. Um, I think the guides see DeSantis getting booted. He's going to get booted before 26, <laughs> booted. <laughs> See the pun? See the punster? Do you guys catch it? Are y'all catching the punster? Remember DeSantis with his white boots? He's going to get booted. Look how cute they are. Okay, he's going to get booted. Um, 
They've never said that. They always just say he's going to get removed or run out due to water, due to washing machines and and uh, money. Um, he's going to get booted. Um, so I don't see him lasting into 26. Now, let's just say for the sake of really fun things that he does get booted. And let's say he gets booted in 24. I would be surprised if he lasts until 24. I'm going to tell you, he done made the mouse mad. He made the mouse mad. Uh, the mouse has so much money and so much, so many possibilities, resources to dig up dirt on this man. I don't, I think Mickey, Mickey's gloves are going to be clean. I don't think there's going to be a smudge on them. But I think Mickey is going to be the reason why DeSantis gets booted out. OK, so um, I think it's going to be maybe the end of this year or the beginning of next year. And again, it's the same reason. It's the same reason for Thomas. You can't make him go right. Like like there's no way to make Thomas step down. There's no way to make DeSantis step down, except for that. Your handlers, the person who owns you, the country who owns you, they own you. You've made the mistake of thinking that you own you and you're making all the decisions. Uh, that's not true. You know who you answer to. And you know if they say, you answer. If they say, jump, you jump. You don't even ask how high. So these people like that are telling us, you can't make me step down. I am the all-powerful governor. I'm the all-powerful SCOTUS. No, honey, you're not. That big bad country over there is going to ask you to step down or they're going to unalive you. And that's your choices. Oh, look, I have to catch my plane. Bye. That's that's what we're looking at. OK, when people say, well, how's it going to happen? That's how it's going to happen, because when you are drawing attention. To them, for the dark money. To the, the, the people, the countries that need to remain in the shadows. You're a liability. You're a problem. You're no longer helping. You're hurting. Therefore, you got to go. So that's how I see DeSantis going. Either Mickey will produce the goods or whoever is fronting DeSantis, and I think it's a country that starts with an R. We all know he had that, that Farah girl that his assistant had to literally she was a registered agent of a foreign country russia and was his assistant for a year before she registered as a pharaoh so come on okay so when they say hey all the you know the heat is getting too hot over here you got to go he's going to go trust me one way or another the easy way or the hard way Ask, ask, uh, they just told me to say, ask Ivana, <laughs> go visit a golf course near you. Okay. Or a window. Woo. Getting crazy in here, y'all. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. You never know where these questions are going to go. Equus 3333. How you doing? Says guns NRA gone. End of federalist society. Question, 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 question. Okay. Well, we talked about guns last on part one. You should watch it if you didn't. Um, but yes, I do see guns gone for so many reasons. They're going to be legislated, registered, regulated, and the gun makers don't want this. They're tired of this. They don't, they don't want it. Nobody wants it, okay? The only people that want it are Republicans who are being bought off by a certain country. Two... Put a gun that's a military style gun in every American's hands and then flood the social media that they're all trying to come and attack you so that when you pull up in their driveway because you're lost or you get in the wrong car by accident, we start shooting each other. It's it's it works perfectly for them, not so good for us. So that's coming to an end. The NRA is under attack again, I understand. Um, and they're going to be continuing to be under attack. They're they're a shadow of who they were. 
They are being propped up by external money. Again, country with R, um, I, they're going to be gone. The NRA is going to be gone. I'm, and, and maybe this is too many years, but in five years, this is going to be a bad dream. I mean, a terror, a night terror dream, but a, but a past tense. I think, and the guide said this, that January of next year, you're going to start seeing movement towards this um, tightening of the guns, tightening of, of everything, of the radicalization that's happening to these people on these gaming sites. They go and they, they go into chat rooms and they chat with each other about the games and they're chatting with people from all around the world. And some of these people are radicalizing these at-risk individuals and encouraging them to go out and do these things. So you're going to see the FBI involved. You're going to see a lot more of a crackdown on all aspects of this problem. Uh, and the end of the Federalist Society. Now that's where we're going to have to part ways. I don't see the end of the Federalist Society. I, I've told you guys, the guides have told me that we would have 80% of dark money would be gone. Now that's a that in and of itself sounds incredible, maybe incredulous, maybe beyond the imagination. 80% of dark money will be gone. On the flip side, it's kind of irritating that 20% is going to crawl back into its crevice, right? And that's what they do. This is what they do, right? Look at Roger Stone. He was he was involved in Nixon's campaign. He crawled back in his crevice and then popped up again like some kind of zombie or something, you know? So they'll crawl back into their crevice and they'll wait for another opportunity to do dastardly things. So I don't see the Federalist Society disappearing. I do see, and I, I don't know if I said it in this video or the last video, but I do see them trying to whitewash, you know, their organization. And you're going to see this across the board. It, it, it's again, it's just like Fox. Let me sacrifice this. Is that good enough? No. Let me sacrifice three more. Is that good enough? No. Okay. Let me sacrifice them. Let me break apart. Let me change everything. So you don't even recognize me anymore. Okay. Yes. The Federalist Society, I see them swinging to the center, not getting anywhere close to the center, but coming from Neanderthal, violent, libertarian, crazy people, you know, to maybe just very conservative Republicans, right? Remaking their image is what they're going to be doing. And that's what a lot of these Republicans are going to be doing. This is what the guide's been telling you. Once all this starts going down, the rest of those Republicans are going to be like, you know, I never believed in that man. I never liked him. I never liked her. She was terrible. And, and you know, we're probably going to have CNN saying, really? Oh, yeah, you were OK. Instead of some hard hitting journalist going, sir, really? Here's 500, you know, tweets from you about how you admired this person. We got to stop letting these people off the hook, right? When they try to remake themselves, jump to the right side of, of the deal. But this is what I see. The Federalist Society will try to remake itself and, and at the same time, crawl back into its crevice. I don't see it disappearing, unfortunately. It's just like the guides and they're reminding me, they, they say this almost every third video. It's like if you ever watch the horror film, right? And it ends just as the monster is running back into the woods, you know, and you're like, that damn thing is coming back to get me in part five. You know what I mean? Like, they're just going to survive to scare us and harass us another day. And if you wanted to switch to spiritual, I would say you have to learn your lesson. Once you really learn the lesson, that that monster's not coming back anymore because you've really learned the lesson. Pretty pretty much we've learned 80% of the lesson. So 20% of the monster is going to come back. And, but that's okay because as I've told you guys, 
we learned the lesson. We, we experienced Holocaust energy, Nazi energy, fascist energy. There's no, no denying that. But we've done it without everything that happened in Germany, right? We, we had Trump. He could have done some things, but we put in the safeguards and enough of us stood in the breach. Enough of us elected Biden. So we are repeating these energies, but we're, we're learning from them. And they're having a le- as bad as it is, and it's bad, it's not as bad as it was. So look at the history. It's not as bad as it was. We're learning. We really are. We're getting that 20% over and over again, right? Or whatever that percentage is. Okay, a few more questions. <laughs> Who is this? Pat Lee says, is Florida Governor DeSantis crazy or just egoman- e- egomaniacal? <laughs> crazy or egomaniacal? Egomaniacal. He's not crazy. He's not. He's he's a he's um in my opinion for entertainment purposes only he's a fascist. Um he's a misogynist. Um uh, I he I mean that's still a that's still a health diagnosis, a mental health diagnosis if you ask me. On top of everything else. Okay, great question. Retro says Oh, Retro. Retro starts off with, I've asked this many times. I'm so sorry, Retro. And Retro says, and you've talked about it many times. So apparently, I'm not sure what's happening. The Ukraine war that is, my question is, what will happen to the war after Putin? Will the war restart? Will the war restart sometime later with a new leader? Okay. So. um the guides are not backing down. They I did three videos on Ukraine war last year when it very first started, before it even started. And and the guides were right about everything. Everything, the guides, they've been right about everything, except for the timing. The timing, I effed that up. That was bad. But everything else has been right. And And this is what I see. Now, I'm still flummoxed by the timing. But what they said was, they see Putin going, um, and and lately they've been saying like, via Hitler's way, when Hitler was in his little bunker, you know, that kind of thing, that's how he goes. That's how Putin goes. And then I see a militaristic leader taking over. Now, this militaristic leader could either be a general or a, a military leader, or it could be an oligarch who is controlled by a military leader because Russia is falling apart at the seams. Literally, it's it's held together with invisible wire that's going to break and it's just everything is just going to fall apart so so the the people that live in moscow and some of the bigger cities st petersburg they they think that things are going kind of okay i mean they think they're at war they certainly understand that they they think that the ukrainians are racist or nazis or whatever they've been brainwashed to think but they're starting to really get it like the people that were going to leave left and now there's people that are flowing out of Crimea like crazy. Um, but it hasn't quite gotten to that point that I see it getting, where there's riots in the streets, that there's uh, no food, that there's of uh, crime fighting over a piece of bread. Um, it hasn't quite gotten there yet. But that is why I see this military junta or military presence taking over because it it has to be a police state. It has to be um, completely locked down police state um, because otherwise it's just going to devolve into a revolution or something. So I see that. Now, when that happens, that oligarch and that military person, they want Crimea. They, they're willing to give up the Donbass region. They're, they're not ready to give up Crimea. Crimea is a port city. It's very, very important to Russia. 
logistically. Um, and I think that they may try they they may try to do something crazy. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I know I said crazy and you can't get any crazier than what's happening, but imagine this kind of crazy. Imagine them overtaking Russia and then saying, okay, Russia has new new management, you know, the sign under new management. And then, you know, they call up Zelensky and they're like, yeah, here's the deal. I'm the new guy in charge. So sorry about wrecking your country, right? Uh, can we make a deal? I need to make you a, a deal. I need to have access to Crimea. Like you can have it back, but I need to have access and I need to have a guaranteed port with a 500 year lease. See, to me, that's crazy. And to them, it's reasonable. It's like, yeah, we're just doing business. I got to do a little business. I did a little business. You know, it's like, never mind the fact that you've killed half of our civilization and you've destroyed our entire country. You, you think we're going to do a little business. No, we're not going to do any business. Zelensky is going to be like, no, because he's a nice guy. You know, if it were me, it would be no with a lot of expletives. But Zelensky is going to be like, no. And he's going to hang up that red bat phone. So that's the problem. Um, but it doesn't matter because right now, and I've been saying this too, I don't know what I say in my head and what I say to you guys. It's a complicated situation up here. Um, it's the planes. I did a video a, a couple of months back and I told you guys, it's all about the fighter jets. All about the fighter jets. They're coming. I don't know which ones are coming. I think. F-16s from the United States are going or going or have gone or are coming or whatever. But I also know that many fighter jets from other countries are coming. And honey, once those Ukrainians have those fighter jets, it's all over. It's all over. Air superiority are the words that I'm hearing. Air superiority. They will be able to patrol their own airspace. They will be able to knock out any of those mortars or any of those missiles where they are. Now, the problem is Western nations have not wanted to give Ukraine planes because, well, for one thing, their pilots don't speak English and they don't know how to fly our planes. But secondly, they didn't want to give them planes because they didn't want them to go and bomb Moscow. They didn't want to escalate. It's all about don't escalate, don't escalate. So basically, we've been giving Ukraine enough stuff to beat Russia with their right arm tied behind their back. With their non-dominant hand, whatever it is for you, that's what Ukraine has been doing. That Ukraine has been whooping Russia's butt with one arm tied behind their back. Well, that's going to change because there's a lot of reasons. Because Again, everybody realizes, remember earlier the guides are, were saying, they're reminding me that, that, the, that the people waited to see, like the fascists are winning, we're going to be on the fascist side. And now they realize the fascists are losing, so we're going to be on the democracy side. Guess what? China, Iran, Turkey have been watching and they signed up for, well, in China's case, they were playing both sides. But say, Turkey, you know, they've been pretty helpful. Iran has been very helpful to Russia. Well, now these countries are realizing, God dog it, we picked the wrong team. We're going to lose. So now these countries are like, mm, okay, we're very sorry. We can no longer work with you anymore because we need to be on the winning side because they're real powerful. So now what you have is the supporting countries backing up backing off of their support of Russia. And so it's it's over. It's just a matter of timing of, you know, I do think that they will get these planes. And I do think that for the most part, the Ukrainian pilots will honor, you know, their pinky swear to not bomb Moscow. And I think as long as they do that, they're going to they're going to mop up the floor with them and then this oligarch slash military person in Crimea is they got no they got no 
what do you mean you want to bargain with me? What are you talking about? You know, I'll see you in The Hague. You know what I mean? So that's how I see it going down. Now, I want to just briefly tell you um, that I that two things and that the, the guides have always said this and they've never backed down for over a year. So when energy repeat, when they keep telling me the same thing over and over and over again, and it doesn't change to me that the energy gets stronger and stronger and the stronger it gets, the more real, the more possibility of becoming real it has. So I've always seen Ukraine being rebuilt with glass buildings, with tall skyscrapers, glass, beautiful, modern architecture. I see architects offering their um, services for free so that they can, you know, be honored to have their building there in that city. Um, it's it's a, the guides have always said that Ukraine is going to be the phoenix that comes out of the ashes, that rises out of the ashes. They will. They're going to be rebuilt. And, and the country itself is going to be very prosperous. It's going to be very prosperous. It's going to be um, sort of the financial center, the new financial center of Europe in many ways. Um, it's It's just going to be it's going to be okay as much as you can be okay having lost a tremendous number of your citizens and gone through complete hell for no reason but it will come out of this and it it will be be victorious and then as far as russia goes i see russia being under this military junta for say 2 to 3 years not long and then that's going to fail because the bottom line is this, Russia has a lot of resources, untapped resources. It's a great big country. Um, and that's money. That's money. So they're going to want to go towards a socialist, a, a democratic socialist or capitalist democracy. Now, I don't see them being some... You know, I don't see them being the Netherlands, you know, I, I see them being kind of barely a democracy, but a democracy and uh, and and really much better democracy and much more capital improvement. You know, a lot of Russia has no indoor plumbing, no, no electricity. A lot of it is very rural. I see a lot of of infrastructure and, and that starts three years from now and then continues. You know, forward. For like 10 to 20, 30 years, it might have a lot of um, investment from Saudi Arabia uh, as well. So anyway, that's pretty interesting, I think, as well. Um, thank you for your question. And Deb O says, who revealed the finances of SCOTUS? Um, I think you mean Thomas or maybe you mean all of SCOTUS. Uh, and Deb O says, I know it was ProPublica, which is the not-for-profit news journalist group that we should all be supporting and donating five bucks to them for their amazing work. Um, but she says, but did they have an actual source? So what happened with ProPublica is, because I've read a lot about this. First of all, this stuff has been, this stuff with Harlan Crow has been public for years maybe even for eight or 10 years, some of it has been public. So this is what I'm saying earlier, the light was shining, but we didn't have the activation energy to do anything about it. We couldn't be bothered or we were in this, you know, place where we couldn't see. So a lot of this information was out there. And, and unfortunately that emboldened these people to think that they were untouchable, you know? And, and now they're finding out they're not untouchable. So I think when some of the Dems saw these people being untouchable, they thought, well, this is just how you have to do business. You know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And that's why I think some of the Dems are going to get caught up in this investigations and the light shining. And this is the Dems, ne not necessarily in SCOTUS, but definitely in Congress and in the Senate. So as far as ProPublica, they knew where to look. And then they did the brilliant sleuthing 
that used to be journalism, but is now not journalism because corporations have bought all of our journalistic entities like CNN and, you know, there, there's just no more journalism. So thank God for ProPublica. What they did was they just started, they had not one source, they had 20 sources. They interviewed the doc, the deckhand, the deckhand that simply helped people get on the boat. Then they found, you know, maybe a chef on the boat. And then they compared Thomas's schedule when he was in court, out of court. And then they, they use a simple thing that's public, that's flight trackers to track Harlan Crow's his private jet, because this all has to be tracked because you go through towers, right? You land, you go through airport towers. They tracked his plane from, you know, various places. And then they hooked that information up with pictures, public and otherwise. So they literally just pieced it together. It wasn't just one source. It was really good reporting. And it and that's why that's why Thomas is really dead to rights about this because there's it's a, a whole I forget how long all the details were, but you can't dispute 20 eyewitnesses, right? I mean, they really they got this guy from every direction possible. So yes, and and ProPublica is doing the same thing with other Democrats and other Republicans. They're looking at everybody. They're the ones that just broke the case on Clyburn. On Clyburn, who is a Democrat, very powerful Democrat, who worked with the Republicans to re re reduce Democrats voting in his own state. So seriously. Not kidding. ProPublica.com. P-R-O-P-U-B-L-I-C-A. Pro and then publica.org. .org. Please support them. They're doing, they're doing the work that we need done right now. They are very important to us. And um, hopefully other journalists will jump on board and be as committed and as detailed and as ethical as they are. Um, I think I'll just do one more question. And um, Iris Exomom, I have no idea how to say that. Iris Exomom, Iris Exomom, I don't know, uh, wants to know, what is the general situation with AI looking like in the next few years? Is it good for us or bad for us or a mixture of both? And the guides have been asked this question before, and they're saying it's coming. You you got to just deal with it. It's like cell phones took over pagers and pagers took over landlines and, you know, automobiles took over horses. Is it good or is it bad? There's good and bad all mixed up in it. And um, it is the guides are saying it is a technology and it's humans. It, it, it is in itself a tool. A hammer. You could you you could hit somebody in the head with a hammer, or you could put a nail in a board and build your house or build your boat. You know what I mean? So it's a tool. Uh, we have to decide how it's going to be used. And I I feel like Europe, and specifically maybe France and Spain. I don't, I don't know what I'm seeing, um, will be front runners in saying, we're not going to allow this. We're going to outlaw this. We're going to put regulation on this. They're talking about when subliminal images were hidden in movies or commercials and how that was outlawed. That, that was outlawed. You can't do that. We're going to pass a law that you cannot do that. Because the subliminal images were subliminal. They were affecting people without their knowledge. So this is what I kind of see with AI is that we're going to we're going to regulate it. Um, and we're all going to have to get a lot smarter because coming next year are going to be these deep fake videos where you could see a picture of me 
with my face, my mouth moving on this background and hear me in my own voice saying something that I would never say, something racist, something fascist. They have the technology to do that. They can make me say something fascist and then put it out there and tell you guys that I said this to a friend off, off camera and I'm truly, really a fascist person. You're going to have to be able to discern whether that's true or not. This is where we're going. It's, it's like we've unlocked some level of Pandora's box from hell. And now we're on the next level, right? Somehow we, we did that. And, and now we've got AI and we've got deep fake videos. And how are we supposed to navigate that? How are we supposed to know? Well, the guides are saying it's just like now when you see things and you ask a younger person, they're like, no, that's fake. Look at this. And if you look at it closely, you can see something that's a telltale, you know, thing that you can say, okay, yeah, now I see it. It's education. We need to educate ourselves about this. We need to educate ourselves about AI. And we need to regulate it. And again, this is not a spectator sport. This is our country. This is our laws. This is our lives. And Americans are going to get in the streets and they're going to be very much an active part of the government, of the governance, of requiring or demanding that our government listen to us. So this is kind of where we're going. Again, it's we've unlocked a new level of Pandora and here we are. We're going to uh we're going to learn. That's what's going to happen. So some AI is going to be great. It's going to be really good. But it's just like anything. We have to use the tool for its best purpose. And, and first of all, we have to figure out what that is. What is the best purpose? And then we have to figure out best practices for that. And then what's really been missing is once we decide best practices, we really need to create some sort of oversight committee that says, well, this was best practices in 23, but now we're in 2028. And this has to change because it's not the same. It's not the best practice anymore. We're no longer in a place where we can pass a law or an amendment and let it stand for 25 years. Everything is moving so much faster we're going to have to come back and revisit it probably every two years to three years, which is a rate that we've never done before. We pass laws and then we don't, we don't even pay attention. We just keep on going, right? Or we adopt a technology and then we just keep going. We don't go back and, and say, maybe this isn't working as well as it should, right? So that's kind of what I see for that. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for staying to the end. I really, really appreciate it. Please let me know in the comments if you have questions or if you enjoyed this video or heck, even if you didn't enjoy it, just let me know. But if you did enjoy it, consider subscribing and give me the thumbs up and um, take really, really good care of yourselves. There's a lot of good happening. It's a lot of change, but a lot of good. So I want you to focus on the good when you're having a rough day or something terrible happens. I want you to think about Tucker Carlson being thrown into the abyss. That'll make you happy. All right, take really good care and we'll talk to you soon. For entertainment purposes only.